I want to speak to us on the subject, the church as advocate is what we are going to look at. We've been doing a series um, about um, the church and politics. So today was my day to preach, coincidentally with the other things, the church as advocate. And as I speak on this subject, I was praying in the morning uh, just before I came to this place. And I remember those old days when I was a young person. And when somebody passed on in the clan, we didn't have phones. And the phones came a little bit later. When they, if they were there, and then they were not in our village those days. So you could be sent to go and deliver a message of bereavement. And so you, we were guided by, they, were, say they would send us two of us, an older cousin and a young one. You could walk literally for about two hours to go and deliver a message to our aunt, maybe was married in another village, to a grandfather. So you are asked to be, they would look for somebody who's strong, who will arrive and not cry as the first thing, um, who would come and sit and be calm. And one of the things you do to deliver that message also was to go and receive a cup of tea if it was offered to you for the first few minutes, okay? Read the mood and deliver the message. <laughs> Buana Svesan, you were to be a right advocate of the bad news to the people that you are sent to. I was looking at that as Christians. As we go through elections, I know many of you think and believe things can be okay. But there are people God is looking unto that they need to be right and to be nice advocates, like some of us were. I remember at one point when I went, I met one of my aunts, she was unwell. So we had never encountered that scenario. How do we deliver now that message? So we sat, we called his son and told him aside. So we could learn some wisdom in trying to pass the message. Today, as I speak to us as a church, as an advocate, I want to remind you that we are in the electioneering period. The rumor mongering and the many things that are happening around can really sway us and make us not deliver what God wants us to deliver. And that can be the worst part of us as believers. So who is an advocate? An advocate is a person who publicly supports or recommends a particular cause or a policy. You go out and say, I stand for this. And I've seen that now we have around four politicians or four candidates for the presidents. We have a new one. He has come with his policy. And he's advocating for certain things, yeah? So you can see him and make a choice. You have your favorite candidate also. Maybe it's the one I'm talking about, the new entrant, the professor. They have something they stand for, and they publicly declare what they stand for. They advocate for something. You've seen some people that actually advocate for same-sex um, marriages. They go out publicly, and they declare who they are, okay? But for us Christians... Are we going to keep our Christ in our hearts, in our churches, in our surroundings, and not take him to where God wants us to do? An advocate can also mean, some of you know, who, somebody who puts a case on someone uh, else's behalf. You've had some advocate. You speak for a client, and they, they represent you well. If you've murdered somebody, you need to represent me well. Okay? I've seen particularly those who do the criminal cases. I really wonder how they do it. They represent you well, my brother, or my sister. Yeah? Until when you reach there, you say you did a good job and you reward them with something. I'll be talking in the perspective of both, both for advocating a cause and of somebody who speaks on someone's behalf. We speak on behalf of God. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, and 26 to 28, we are reminded that we are made in the image of God. So we speak everything on the behalf of God, who we are image of. And apart from that, we know that we need to carry the value of God wherever we want to go. Let's look uh, on, uh, on our main scripture, Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 21. You could turn with me in that particular portion of scripture. Uh, Luke chapter four, verse 14, Luke chapter four, verse 16 
all the way to verse 21. It's our main scripture. The Bible says, he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue. It was his custom. He stood up to read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He stood up to read and the scroll of prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place it is written. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the captives, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. That is the word of God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you this morning. Lord, as we look at your word and in respect even the circumstances we are as Kenyans and electioneering and comparing and campaigning period, I pray that you minister to us that we are going to be advocates of peace, advocates of justice, advocates of equality, O oh God, and equity. In the name of Jesus, O oh God, that each one of us will pick the role that you've given us, however small it is in this country, is concerned these elections, and lead us and guide us. Today, as you speak to us, speak to us, O oh God, with clarity and simplicity. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Jesus speaks these words. And he takes a scripture and rereads, not a new script, a script that was even handed to him. In the olden days, and you know so many churches, you would go to church and you handed over uh, whatever you were to read. So he scrolled and he gets a place and he read this particular message. Jesus knew his mission. One of the things that I want to speak about today, because I will not speak long, the portraits of Christ, the advocate in this passage. The Bible says, and he was given the script. He reads at the place where he was prophesied that he will come and he will lead people. And Jesus is not distracted. And the teachers of law, the Pharisees and the Pharisees, Pharisees are seated. And they look at him, read that word. He was just reading. He was not preaching. And the Bible says the eyes were fastened on him. Because he was representing God. He was speaking a message that was meant to transform. At one point, and many of you know, Jesus in Matthew chapter 14, uh, verse 13, all down there. The Bible records that Jesus, after he had preached, people followed him. The way the crowd would follow us. Thank God that I'm also taking over a crowd when senior is going to a smaller crowd. What will really interest you when you see the crowd? And Jesus tells these people, sit down, I have a mission for you. And the Bible says, and he healed the sick. I'm talking about Matthew chapter 14. May I read some of us so that you don't get lost? The portraits of Christ, the advocate. When Jesus heard that what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot, from foot, from towns. And when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them. And he healed those who were sick. You see, in this place, he said, and the authority has been given to heal. Jesus knew his role. An advocate will not go to represent you over an accident that happened on the road. And he picks from the bushes. He understands what to do. So he tells them to sit down. So as evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place. And it's already getting, send the crowds away. They were getting disturbed. They do not know this man is advocating. He is consistent, preaching to you as sixth sermon on church and politics. He was consistent. And it is already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. And Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And you know that time they only had two loaves 
and some, um, they had how many loaves? Five loaves of bread and two fish, and they fed them. The portraits of Christ, the advocate. Christ came to advocate for our liberty. Number one, he says, <coughs> I have been anointed <coughs> to preach good news. They were sick. They must be healed. They were discouraged. They may find something. We are discouraged, my brother, my sister, this country. And we must be able to proclaim and be advocates of the things that matter to us. Thanks to Elder um, Jeremiah. He told us last time that when you talk about fuel, that is politics. It is now 159 shillings. When you are paying for that thing, you just pray that something will come. God wants us to see good news. Even when we are devastated. As Christians, we will not lament. We will look unto him. So he says, as one of the key characteristics, Jesus came that he may bring good news. That when we are discouraged, we may find good news. I'll be talking about that later. Another thing that I see in Christ, he says, he came to liberate the poor. They were there, and they were like a sheep without a shepherd. That is what the Bible talks about. Now, these who follow him on foot, they didn't have any means. Maybe there was some means for some people. And they could sit with him until evening, until the disciples get disturbed. He came to liberate the poor. He was an advocate for the poor. He came to set the captives free. There are many of us that are captive of many things, including churches. And this need to come to us. We pray for us. The other day, I saw an advert. You know, for almost seven or some more than uh, eight years, we have not been having registration of churches. For some of you who are not aware, maybe you've heard some people wanted to form new church. You could only have like an expansion, but there was no registration. To make the matters worse, we had got a place where the KRA were looking after our tithes and offerings. Like they look after your income. Once it hits your account, they say, have you paid the custom duty? So they could come even for what belongs to God. Our tithes and offering. If you work in KRA, I'm just saying this light. No. But when we go to elections, I would want you to understand you are advocates to liberate some of us because we are captives of many laws, many things as Christians. Okay? We got at a place whereby even I heard they say, reduce, we need to adjust the noise. You know, preaching was, is, and to many people, even prayer becomes a noise. So we become captives. We can't even pray in our villages, in our churches. It's good to have those things of Nema and all those kind of things. But God is sending you as, a cap, as a, an advocate to set the captive free. Christ knew that. He even knew that the, the Pharisees preached, okay? But they were not following what they were saying. People were captive of law. The law that did not, that did not set them apart. And Jesus says, I am your advocate. So he reads that word boldly and he says it. He says, I have come to recover the sight of the blind. And many of us sometimes are very blind. We don't see far. We don't see what God is doing in our lives. I was trying to introspect when Bishop called me. I felt one of the most uh, worthless person because I was still adjusting to my new position. But God opened my eyes and says, there is something that I want to do in my life. And I think it's what I want to seek and know that my eyes will be open to see what God is doing in your life. For many of us, God is elevating you, not for yourself, but for himself. When Jesus saw the crowd, he did not see the votes. The Sadducees saw the votes. He says, he is the king? How is he speaking? Who is he? Jesus tells the crowd, sit. And they sit. He has no food to give them. He was seeing a different thing in this film. Muswaila akasema, kuna tafauti ya kutazama na kuona. Praise the Lord. There are many of us that need to be able to get this, that Christ came, that he may set our eyes. I said it on last time that God is putting us on a yardstick. As Kenyans, how we choose. 
Now that we are having somebody who is advocating that he can pay Kenyan debt using some certain plants that grow somewhere. God is putting a yardstick on us on how we pray, how we view that. I know we laugh at home when that guy says, yes, the debt will be gone in one year. I will tell you, after the debt is gone, the remaining people will die. And those who are chased away because of debt will come and they will take free without debt. I can tell you if your eyes were not open. There are things that you need to see beyond the physical. When God is raising me and God is promoting me, of what purpose is he doing it for me? Jesus saw what even the disciples could not see. They were getting disturbed. This man is speaking to the crowd. We have not eaten. And even the crowd did not eat it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They were hungry as the disciples. Their eyes were blind. So he came to set as an advocate of the blind. And I pray that we be like that. That when we go to vote, don't vote like those people who are voting because they have 200, have some 500. May your eyes be recovered. God did not intend you to be blind. He says he came to liberate the oppressed, so like the poor. Kenyans are begging him. They will go to the election because we've been pressed on every side. And we were going to cast our vote, hoping, and we pray that that be so. That after that elections, we live a better life. So Christ came to do that. And we can be advocate of that. So we don't get there and we find that people are doing things they're not liberating us. We are getting enslaved. The other day I saw, after the completion of the superhighway, is it the superhighway or the expressway, and Kenyans could not go up there. Our pockets can't afford. Can't afford. Could just make some line. My friend, that's how things are. There is meat in the shop, but there is nothing in my ATM. So God came to liberate the oppressed. And he says, one of the other portraits I see, he came to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. It was a year of liberty. Praise the Lord. There is a day that God wants us to know that he has come to redeem us. And that year is this year. Praise the Lord. What that means to you is different. Anyone can get there, but may this be the year God is liberating us and setting us to be distinguished person, the portraits of Christ, the advocate. Let me look at some few clustered points on that point. The advocate of good news. The world is full of bad news. We need good news. Born as we son. The world is full of bad news. And the newsmakers have known this to be the best of their news. Somebody has said, if a dog bites a man, that's not news. But if you buy the dog, that would be news. So people would want to come and see the reverse. That's why Jacoya, the man, is getting the prominence. I'm not saying it's bad news. You know, young people say, I'm just saying, those are things you've not heard about. The world is full of bad news. There are no good news. No wonder even this gospel is not making sense. I was in a matter too with one Bible, Pastor Patrick, I don't know whether you left your old Bible, I think you used to, the one you carry like this. I, I dare you go and tempt now in the matter to people who look at you as if you are insane. It's no longer news. People now no longer want to carry the word of God. People want to swipe and say, I'm a Tusiwa. The certificate from Tima has been canceled. Those are news now. Okay. What are the bad news? And we are excited about that. Opening the scroll, which is the Bible, this is where good news is. This is where the good news God is asking us to look at. And we look at many things. I know many of us look at life in the lenses of our culture, in the lenses of many things. But let me tell you, God has some good news for you. One of the things I looked at, and I should just allow me to say humbly, when I was appointed, I'm the newest and the youngest senior pastor. You can take that now and start praying for me. 
Now, the curtain has been broken into two. Buenas fe sana. There is no seal. There is no li liberty. There is no limit. It's been broken. Praise the Lord. Now, this is where the good news is. Stop looking at things in your own eyes. One of our senior pastors, while I was serving in the children's center, and I went to pray with me, and he said, like, can you be like David, that you was looking up the fathership, and he will be asked to come, and he will be smelling the gods. That was Reverend Obara. He prayed for me. For him, I was saying, I don't have a fellowship because at the center. And I remember he prayed with me and for me. I don't know whether he remembers that, because that was some long time ago, and some time pastors do that. There are good news in this Bible. Things that you've never looked at and never seen them. And Jesus brings the scroll that was always at the podium and he reads the words and the people look at him fastened and they say, what is he reading? He say, I have come to liberate them. Those who are said, reading it, he was reading it. He was not speaking his own words. They are good news. How come the Sadducees and the Pharisees did not see this passage? How come they did not see the spirit of this passage? It's because it was not good news to them. Philippians chapter 2 verse 3, the Bible asks us not to do anything from self-ambition or conceit, but in humility to count on others more significant than ourselves. That is a good news God is asking us to look at. I know sometimes we stamp on others, but God is asking us not to be self-ambitious. Jesus was not selfish. James chapter 4 verse 17, he says, if anything, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, is it, is it sin for them? This is a call to social justice. This is a place of us to engage the world from point of information. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Christians, we need to be advocates of the things of God. I worked in a school that was not a Christian school. But at one point, when we had some wrangles and leadership, because the guy was taking over from Amuindi, and he felt like it. I remember the man calling us in an evening for a good dinner. And he said, I want us to pray. He's not born again. I want you to pray. We are mixed with the Catholic secretary there. My friend, there are people that are claiming things in this political atmosphere. And Christians are waiting. They are waiting. I want to challenge you. There's some good news we need to start proclaiming. The year of the Lord's favor in this country. The year of the Lord's favor in our county here. The year of the Lord's favor in our, your own MCA. I came to realize that people know the presidency and they don't know their MCA. And that is where things, the rabbi is meeting the road. Many of us don't have some inner roads inside there. God wants you to take this and take the good news there. Be the advocate for good news. When you hear people complaining, go and ask yourself, and who can I ask that we may be able to do a good thing in this nation? Sad to say that uh, Nairobi, we have planted flowers twice. Now we have removed and put the expressway. And those flowers costed a lot of money. It will cause somebody else to ask us in different towns, what will it take for us to see future so that we don't waste money to come and build another expressway in Eldoret? The good news when there are bad news of wastages that we are talking about, of money that is being lost. This is it. Be advocate of good news. <coughs> Advocates for liberation. Um, Joel chapter 3 verse 10 talks about let the weak say that I am strong. Let the poor say that I am rich. James chapter 1 verse 9 verse 11 talks of believers in humble circumstances or to take pride in their high position. He's speaking of a proclamation of where we are not seeing ourselves the same. Where we are no longer going to live and think we will just see things in our own cultural eyes. This is what Jesus is speaking about. He's speaking of liberty, that poor will be rich. He's talking about those who are blind, they will see. He's talking about those that were oppressed, they are going to see themselves sit in a place of liberty. Praise the Lord. Advocates of liberation. 
And that's what God is asking us to look at. There are many laws that are tying us. And people have said that even times when Kenyans are asked for public participation of many things, uh, we don't read. I just noticed the other day that even when you are signing loans when you want money, we have around 21 rules and regulations that says if you don't pay, we will come for your neck and say, because you don't want money, you have not read that. You just sign. Liberation of reading. And they have said that if you want to hide anything from a Kenyan, hide it under a book. They will not read it. God is liberating us, my friends, that we need to go and read and read our documents. We have allowed people to read for us. Our politicians are reading for us. They are reading the moods of everything. The other day, I, I wanted some fertilizers. going at a very high rate. Si kupanga laini diye pini kamua kuenda kwa duka. Juzi ni kasema ni itaenda ni jikaze ni pate hii chipu. Nilipanga laini. Paka leo ni kwa laini. And you think this is a nice thing? I have to come and preach here. I asked on Thursday, have they read my name? They have not. We need liberation, my friends. There are people that have known to take captive of our lives. Now let me tell you, it's the time we stand up and become advocate for things that matter to us. We want to get a place whereby we will be requesting things online and they are proved. You don't have to go there and say, I know Pastor Patrick, I know Pastor Buira, I know Pastor Ibrahim, okay? This is because we need liberation. Praise the Lord. And we need to advocate this. We need a politician to know that you will serve all of us. Take, for example, that now Eldoret is cosmopolitan. You are new like I'm still new here. And the things are like that. Many people will suffer. If that is the thing, if that is the thinking. Buenas Fesan, advocates of liberation. We are captive of many things. Kenyans are captive of culture, captive of backward systems. You cannot just get justice. I went to another office and I had applied something. After one week being away, I can see my form just where I left. Liberation. Liberation. You must know one person there for you to get a visa to the U.S. These are things we need to look at. And Jesus says and he speaks, I have come that you may have it. And let me say, I have come in the name of Jesus that we may have liberty in the name of Jesus. Equal chance for everyone who is merited. Praise the Lord. Buana Sifiwe. We want a nation that every person can exist anywhere. People are fearing. Certain parts they say, go after elections. Our country. God is seeking liberation. God is seeking for liberation of the brokenhearted, the oppressed, the inflation rates, the unemployment, the illiteracy, the ignorance. There are people who are ignorant. My wife is a vet. They got a cow. They did post-mortem. It's known for to have anthrax. And they asked the villagers to bury. Only the following day to realize that it was eaten. Captivity of ignorance. People ask, you can ask us to, to bury a cow? Can a church advocate for this? Yes, we engage politicians. Some of you are good and connected to them. When you walk with them, would you ask them that will you make things easy? That at a click of a button, any person can be served justice. We are God's reagent. We are God's um, um, uh, agents serve to serve God's purposes. We are to represent him very well. I pray that we'll be that. Advocates to recover sight. I'm almost going to finish. Jesus talks of that I have come. He's speaking to the people that saw him take the scroll. Why is he talking about the recovery of sight? I told you that you can look at things and yet not see what God wants you to see. And you will always fail miserably if you can't look at that. And even someone has challenges that some of us, even when God gives us a small seed 
of salary. We eat seeds. I saw some people try to wash the maize that was to be planted. It's very expensive. He's eating a seed, a real seed. Kaosha, kaboilik, kaweka jibu. They ate it as part of um, another version of, of Gideri. God wants to recover the sight of how we've been looking at things. He has taken the scroll and is reading it before the Sadducees. <coughs> Sorry. Matthew chapter 5, 15, verse 14 says, Leave them. They are blind guys. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. May we not be blind. May our eyes be opened. May the cobwebs be opened for us to see what God wants for this nation. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. I would dare add, even believers, so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Being blinded to that extent. It is the gods of this age. What does that mean? We are in the warfare between, between spiritual and physical. I dare tell you that Kenyans just make emotive noises when we get to elections. And after we elect, we don't care. Now, Christians now are campaigning with this Bible. You get a big one, very new. You go and read um, one scripture, or you can quote what you think exists, and then you know what happens. And we think it's right. Christ wants to see the gospel moving from the pages to actions. People moving from their blindness of their sight to seeing what he wants them to see. We need to advocate for people to see the light of Christ in all matters. It matters to see clearly. It matters. It matters. For many of us, um, I'm attempting to accept that I can't see clearly. I also have some miwani. I'm in denial. But it's trouble, my friend, when sometimes I have to use the glasses for visibility. You could imagine if I'm reading things that are not here. It matters to see clearly. Christ has come that we may see well. And even as a sitter melody, God wants us to start to see things differently. God wants us to move to the point of embracing his word and say, God, lead us. We see it differently. Do not see it in the culture of use. Do not see it from your perspective. Do not see it like the Sadducees used to say it. <coughs> Advocates to declare the year of the Lord. <coughs> Very few of us declare good things upon our lives. Let me tell you, this is the year to declare. Declarations. The Nigerians have known this secret. Declaration. Even some politicians, I'm told that they vow and take things. But we have a greater God. I talked about the portraits of Jesus Christ. He took it and he says, and this is being fulfilled in your sight. We need to be advocates of proclamation of the year of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I dare say that this is going to be the best year of our elections. Amen? Amen. We will move from there and we will forget for us who are in this place. I dare declare that God is going to set us on the higher ground. Praise the Lord. He said, and these things you will see is reading a scroll that was prophesied by Isaiah. These were not his words. I am reading and he said, this is being fulfilled. And they looked at him. We need to declare the year of the Lord. The year of the Lord is a year of unmerited. It's a year of unlimited opportunities. It's a year the Lord is doing what he has never done in your lives. One as few son. Some of us, God is going to do great things. But you need to know which, where is your inference? Where is your point of reference? Jesus is reading from the scroll. He's reading from the Bible. But if it's on your own, you will see others do things. And you wonder. But may we declare that, be advocates to declare God's favor. 
in this nation. Let just favor be there. To the losers, to the winners, let favor be there to all of us. Pastor Judy, even as you go there, favor to follow you and bring you back is possible. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You are laughing at declaration. Buona sue son. Praise the Lord. You know you guys do not know the Lord. I'm saying we do not understand how God works. God has a way of doing things. And he works. We declare that. Amen. The year of the Lord was the year of redemption. Redemption is to redeem that which was yours. Amen. I'm the one who declared and opened Pastor Judy's house. It was huge. I opened it as like a church, a declaration, and kept a room for myself. She must come to enjoy it. Praise the Lord. You must declare it. We are all shaken on the thing that happened. God is here for redemption. God is here to return that which was lost. That's why the sight was to come that we see things in the way God wants us to do. Psalm chapter 116 verse 9 says that I may walk before God in the land of the living. And in, in Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10 talks about this shall be well with the righteous. These are words of comfort. These are words of declaration. Some of us have been bereaved. Let me tell you. It's the year of the Lord. You can declare that. It costs you nothing to declare the year of God's favor. It costs you nothing. It's only a proclamation of faith. Qualities of a good advocate, so God's advocates. In this passage, I see um, several points. One is anointed by God. You need to know that God has anointed you in your office. If you don't believe that, you struggle. In your family, in this nation, even that small surrounding that all of us are, declare that I have been anointed. He said, I have been anointed to preach the good news. I have been anointed to be an agent of transformation. It is the spirit of God that has anointed them. Okay? The other characteristic is you speak, they are bold. Okay? They are bold. Jesus wakes up and picks up and he reads, just reads, declares, and the eyes are fixed on him because he was of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is on me. He was very bold. He knew who had sent him. One as first son, I pray with a lot of humility, that I may understand that God has called me in different places, be it in Satan, be it to you, be it to any person. And you'll be bold to do whatever you do without looking back as a Christian. Those are advocates. Advocates, I've seen some of them when they act as lawyers before judges. My friend, they terrorize the house. But they know they are speaking to the glad who pay them duly without failing when I said, you don't fail to pay an advocate because you'll be in. So you know how to represent. Be careful. Represent God as exactly because he sent you. They have seasoned words. This is what God is calling us to do. Seasoned words. I gave you the story of when you are going to deliver a message of hope today. You would go there and see something. Kenyans are discouraged. For some of you who are working with juniors, some of them are working hard to put something on the table. Be courteous on them, on the words and deeds of how you walk with them. We sit here and as a church, we pray that God will help us to be a basket that will feed many people. People walk to office and they have nothing to eat. Buona Spesa. It's not just good for us to think that we are up there. God wants our eyes to be open and be seasoned to inspire hope. I passed some times on this place. I saw another man who was trying to make mandazi. He had not eaten any. He slept. He said, wow. He slept on the unga, on the mandazi. God needs to inspire us to see. Kenyans are struggling, I'm telling you, my brother. People are unable to pay loans of 2,000. 5,000. Where are we? And do you think it is okay? The many of them come to our church, they can just seek us and they say, would someone just drop something accidentally for me? You can be intentional to be a person 
season for good deeds. I pray that we will get there. And God will really help us to see things the way God would want us to see them. There are many things that we cannot talk about, but let me mention that as we are talking about the church as an advocate, I mentioned last time, we can advocate for justice, for peace, for equality, for many things. I know now people are talking about women empowerment. Let's not talk about them. Let's actualize them. Let's talk about them, inspire them. I want to conclude by saying this is the year of the Lord's favor. I believe that the atmosphere is pregnant with miracles and signs and wonders. Uh, some of them, you've seen them. Some others, you've not seen them. But are with the Lord. It's the, in the year of the Lord's favor, wasted places are restored. That is what Christ was talking about. I was returning this. Missed opportunities are redeemed. They are brought back. Dreams are reawakened. There are many of us who want to do something and you're just thinking that this government is the impediment to my growth. Now, we want to declare that a God is going to open that. The redeemed of the Lord will walk in his grace. And we believe we can be advocates for God's peace, for God's work. Amen? The Lord bless you so much. And the Lord keep you to be advocates. I want to invite our senior pastor to make a benediction and the Lord will bless you.